The data operator is a custom operator that allows you to create any functions you want to apply to your particles in the system that doesn't have the same limitations as the built-in operators down here. The built-in operators work a lot of the time and I've found that particle flow as a tool is very versatile and there's a lot of stuff you can do with these built-in functions but when you get to the point that you want to create something that's beyond the options that are available here then it can get a little tricky so that's where the data operator comes in because you can do whatever you want inside of it. We're going to jump right into the data operator. The first thing that I do is select auto update so we can see in the viewport everything that's happening and I'll hit edit data flow and now this is what it looks like inside of a data operator. You can just click and drag the sub operators into the view here and these will apply to every particle individually but also at the same time and I will go into our shape instance here and drag down the size of our particles just so we can see a little bit more clearly but what we need to do is query the closest point on the surface of the plane to each particle separately so if we pull in a select object and then we select the plane now we have the plane in our data operator so we need to choose what to do with that data and if we choose a geometry sub operator this has an option in it called closest point by surface and that will be the closest point to each particle individually on the surface of this plane and we can connect that to the object here so now it's querying that point on the plane relative to each particle separately but we don't actually need the point on the plane because we're gonna apply this to the scale we need the color like it needs to interpret the black values versus the white values so if we add another geometry sub operator we can choose point color and the point color takes an object here which is the orange input and then this is a pair which we can connect to the closest point on the surface and if you want to know more about how these connections work and what the color coding means you can learn about that inside of the help documents for the advanced data manipulation that's what the help documents refers to when they're talking about the data operator and the other nodes associated with it like the data test so inside of here there's a specific area called data types and in the data types it shows you what all of the color coding means and it goes into detail about how to use them so back into here we can now use this point color data as the scale so we just put in an output standard and then we're going to set this output standard to scale and you'll see here all the options that are available to you you can use this in many different ways but we're going to set this to scale z component and now you'll see that we're taking a vector which is the point color and connecting that to a real value which is the scalar z component and when you connect these two together there's a conversion operator that's going to be added and this is a vector to real and when you select on that you can see what part of the data it's actually using and if you right click on point color and then choose show data you'll see here on a per particle basis what's actually coming out of it and this means particle zero got a value of 0.5 which means it's exactly halfway between black and white and then this one particle one got a value of 0.8 and so on so since you'll notice that it gives you the value three times because it's a vector the vector to real just takes one of those values so we can just take the XY or the Z it won't make any difference in this case so you'll see here that our particles are now higher or lower based on where they are on the plane and we can go to our shape instance and drag the size up again so now we can see the effect happening and to make the effect happen just a little more clearly we'll need more of a contrast between the low and the high values so in the data operator we can just add a function before we apply it to the scalar z component we can just take this value and multiply it just to scale it up a little bit so if we select our function and this defaults to vector inputs but we're gonna do it to a real value which is the red so we can change this to real and now we can connect it as an input there and then we can connect the output back to scalar z component and then we need to choose the value that we're going to use to multiply it by and you'll see it's still set to addition here so we can just select the function and choose multiplication and then we can add a scalar value in here which is just a real value and connect that so since it's set to 1 right now it's going to be the same thing it was before so if I set this to 20 
Now it's going to be 20 times the values that were in there before. At the beginning of the tutorial, we animated the procedural noise texture. So now as you drag through the viewport, you'll see that they change in scale. And that's because they check the point color of the closest point on that plane surface based on the substeps that your particles are calculated. So if we click on our PF source here, we'll see that in the viewport, their integration step is per frame. So every frame, it's going to recheck that color and reapply it as a scale. And I have some other materials that I set up ahead of time that can show a little more clearly how the effect works. So if I select my plane and then apply a checker pattern to it, for example, and then I just quickly refresh my particles, you'll see that the particles um, go all the way up when it's white and they're all the way down when it's black. So these are ways that you can troubleshoot how that they work and you can change this texture procedurally. Like all you gotta do is swap it and then this is what a regular gradient ramp looks like. So now you can see how all of that works.